Remember when Trisha told us in the last video that she was gonna one and done Colleen and never talk about her again? Well, she saw the views for her last video and turned around and said, Psych! Hi, my name is Jem and today we are going to reload Trisha Paytas' embarrassing out of business sale. What is up? Oh, not much. We're just over here chilling. What's up with you? So, um, hey guys. Hey. I hope that you all had a relatively good week. We did. I know the holiday weekend, everyone kind of like takes off for like so long. Um, even this week, I was like, no one's like really getting back to emails and stuff. So, I was like, you know what, why don't I just take as much of a break as I can? <laughs> I <laughs> love filming, you guys know that. And I love making content and um, um, yeah, everything this week kind of just felt bad. And so I've like restarted this video so many times. Yeah, yeah, we know. You made sure to make us painfully aware that you've been restarting this video. Now, this is something that she talked about on the third episode of the Oversharing Podcast. But I'm like, is it sound weird? I don't know. I, cause even if I, cause I, I know I cut everything. But when people are like, it sounds like she farted at this. I'm like, I definitely did not. Because if I did, it would have been cut. Like I stopped the camera to make sure. You, but. Know, you don't cut anything. First of all, you just said I cut everything. You don't cut anything. I do. I stopped the camera physically, so I know if to, you if yeah, you need to, to cut the end. When I say I cut things, I like you split like, it. You'll make, oh, I see. I see. I see you know see, what I mean? Right. Like if I turn on the camera, I can cut that part. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, got that it. was the. Trisha doesn't know how to edit her videos on software. She actually physically stops her camera in order to do an edit. Like, I honestly don't know how to jump into it, so I'm just going to jump into it, okay? Okay. I love making content. I'm trying to figure out how to keep making content. And Around these parts, Trisha, we already know that you can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> like, I, obviously, this is, this is tech content, but it's just me talking on my iPhone. I can honestly say I've never restarted a video so many times. I've literally shot probably about like a dozen different uh, hellos for this and like casualties like, hi guys, what's up? See, so that's why instead of Trisha just doing a clean cut and starting take one from the beginning, she had to include all of the other stop and starts so that we will believe her when she said that she had to do this a dozen times. All due respect to Trisha, but remember in her video where she fired Colleen and I mentioned she titled her video Colleen with a lowercase c? When I saw that title Colleen, Trisha didn't even capitalize the c. I said a prayer for Miranda. Here she titled this video, This is Embarrassing. All the characters are lowercase. I said it for a reason because Trisha is really good at these kinds of videos, the victim videos. Okay, now let's all watch this Frenemies episode where Ethan and Trisha live react to David Dobrik's second apology. Now the context right now doesn't matter, but I just want you all to watch the way Trisha instinctively knows what to do and how to act to manipulate people with video. Okay, but now I'm ready to watch his actual apology. Well, it's working. People are forgiving him, so... So here we go. You ready? I hear that HR person will all be better. How do we Hi feel guys. about the title? It's um, just the date. One... Interesting. <laughs> oh, is it? That's so weird. I, didn't I mean, it's, it. it's a fresh apology title. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen that, uh, that variety before. Oh, you have? Oh. Yeah, yeah. The, I think the, he's... the generic date apology video. He's That's one of think... the many genres of apology oh, videos. I didn't know that. Right. He's trying to avoid being memed like an apology meme because they always have like the tier list. My, right. my you know, truth. Yeah, I feel what would have been better is just like the straight up, you know, IMG 04950, you know, like the little like file that it is when it's uploaded. I did that a couple times. Oh, just the number. That's real wow. raw. Then you look real raw. You like, are. That's you are the queen of apologies, <laughs> yeah. Trisha. Like I just threw this up, you guys. <laughs> Minus all the edits and the jump cuts. I'm sure That's Natalie did this for him. But so anyway, if you go to his video. <laughs> so many jump cuts in this. There's Trisha's A1 when she's playing a victim. And sorry for you, Colleen, but you made Trisha the perfect victim. That's how wrong you were, Colleen, that Trisha's all the way in the right. And when I say Trisha knows how to do these types of videos backwards and forwards, I'm not making it up, you guys. How do I know? Because Trisha already told us. Ethan got it out of her on Frenemies.
So I'm alone now. <laughs> well, he also made a very good a point as he was adjusting the camera to show that he was in a much smaller house than he lives in. He's in a like an apartment. Right, right. So he's trying to show more humble. Jeffrey started this a week ago with his apology. Mm. He also adjusted the camera on a tripod. Yeah, what is that? It's like, I know how to set up a camera and push play. I believe I'm the one who started this trend. You called it out on you, E3. You Remember when I was like adjusting, talking oh, about Dave Portnoy? You were so... <clears throat> so, I just got a tweet... <laughs> From God, she has the best YouTube. YouTube. She has Facebook. the best content in the game. <laughs> How are you? Couldn't you like set the camera up before you started recording? You know, but only Trisha could pull it off. Like set it up and then hit record. Yeah. Well, it's always got to be like this. I guess it's part of the. It is charm. charm. Part of the immersion. I agree. I would never think to do that though. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> Dave uh, Portnoy. You are such, dude, you are such a trendsetter. They're like, wow, Trisha. Nobody apologizes like you. <laughs> They're like, if Trisha can be well received now, maybe we can by adjusting the camera and showing uh, we're just like everybody else. I'm going to have to remember that. All of us who've been here at this channel for a while already know when people tell you who they are, believe them. So you guys can give Trisha sympathy. That's good. Like I said, in this situation, she's in the right. But everybody over here, we're watching this on an entirely different level. Trisha is showing us her master works. So let's all take note. I don't know why. Like, this is so difficult for me to make. And I'm so, um, like, stuck, I guess. I don't know. I'm just going to jump right into it. And this might be awkward. And this might be weird. And, like, I even debated doing this video because I'm like, mm. I'm gonna just jump right into this because to be honest, I've literally done a dozen different intros and like nothing feels right and this feels awkward and this feels weird. That's a dozen in one awkward intros, Trisha, a dozen in one. Now, Trisha already buried Colleen with her last video. So right now we're gonna watch her tap dance on Colleen's grave, metaphorically speaking. And I feel like it's just something that like I want to make and need to make and um, yeah, okay, well before all this comes down, <laughs> we built this literally in my um, husband's office, like our basement. Let me just, you know, show you guys here. All right, there it is, there it is. Oh, so that's Moses's infamous basement. We heard all about it on Frenemies. Y'all remember when Trisha and Ethan were goofing on Moses's workspace? I've always been impressed by Moses. He always, he's always has like his apartment's always like this crazy workshop <laughs> not our house <laughs> that's why i'm gonna have like little plants myself. everywhere oh, okay but, whatever let's yeah, talk he's bringing the plants. Yeah. he has his own basement. His basement the basement is his all right this is a big one this is a big one basement, huh? hopefully uh you guys remember <laughs> it's a nice basement so this is a not a basement Mm -hmm. You see, as I remember it, this work area was supposed to be a dedicated area for Moses to work on his projects, mostly dealing with water. And now I see that it's a place dedicated for Moses to work on Trisha's projects. I'll show you a wide shot of it real quick. Woo! Careful. I'm literally so clumsy. There we go. There is, there is the set, okay? Built it, built it in our basement. And if you too want to hang up colorful drapes like Moses, I have an affiliate link in the description box from Amazon where you can get said curtains. But please stay tuned to this video because I have an update for the affiliate links. There you go. Okay, let me set you guys back up again. When I say I've never wanted a chapter in my life to be over faster than this, even though it was a very small, quick chapter. By talking about the drama, you are prolonging the drama. But again, I have to say, I can't be mad at Trisha because even the way she's handling her response videos, even though Colleen hasn't even said anything yet, but the way she's handling it, I have to give it to her because she is still being calm and collected while airing out her grievances. I can't be mad at her for that. So continue, Trisha, and collect your views. Like, I mean it, okay? Like, I mean it. This was a lot. It's been a lot the past week. It's been a lot the past month. Like, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. It's everything I feel like is just surface level and everything I talked about and discussed and why it's, like, so personal to me and why I do take it personally and why I was quiet for a while. And then I say something, you know, like... Yeah, Trisha is right with feeling sometimes there isn't any winning because if she didn't talk about it, people were on her case for not talking about it. If she did talk about it, people are on her case for talking about it. So you can't win in either scenario. And really, she had to say something only because she was doing a podcast with Colleen at the time. And we have to really think logically about the situation and how it went down. 
If you're in business with somebody and let's say a scandal or allegation happens, it's not like overnight you cancel or fire the person in question. Even with your regular jobs, it doesn't happen that way. If there is some kind of scandal, there has to be some kind of talking behind the scenes and figuring out what your next steps are going to be. I think we're just used to instant gratification. And so when we hear something happens, it's like right away, we're searching for people to instantly make a statement, cut ties, dismantle everything. And in the real world, that's not how it works. You still have to figure out what's going on and plan your next steps, especially when you're running a business. Things don't take an instant to come together. And the same way, things don't take an instant to fall apart. There's nothing wrong with Trisha feeling the need to talk to people behind the scenes or even talk to Colleen to figure out what was going on. And it's not to be hearing from everybody else. It's to be hearing from the person she is in business with and discussing how they were going to move forward or not in this situation. There's so many personal, personal reasons. And I I absolutely hate that I even had to make it like that's the, that's the very last thing i want to do which is very personal to me we'll just put it that way very very personal and i like i didn't know i was so triggered okay i didn't know i was so triggered um you see how trisha is saying she's triggered but she's still able to maintain her composure and still able to talk through and explain to us what she's going through this is a far cry from her, <laughs> no pun intended, crying on the kitchen floor about whatever drama is going on in her life. There's a way to handle problems in life and throwing a tantrum as an adult is not the way. And she has mental health struggles, so I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the way now she's able to understand and regulate her emotions properly. You can have complaints and real problems, but it's the way you go about expressing these real problems. So I commend her again for just being calm and collected and having composure before she started the camera. Even the way she's handling this situation compared to the way she would handle other situations shows improvement. Now you guys. Like I tell you, I think Trisha is calculated. I think Trisha is very bright. Trisha is good at what she does. And now she's pretty much doing the same thing she used to do, but she's elevated the way she conducts herself. And right now we're at video two of her responses to Colleen. Now we see videos four, five, and six coming in these same kind of vein, especially if it's going to get her a lot of views. Don't be surprised. It's Colleen's fault for making her the perfect victim. I ain't mad at her for telling her story of uh, in this whole situation you know it's it's it it really is bottom line is i really do feel for the people involved i've had relationships like this when i was underage that like truly traumatized me again not even like just teachers just student relationships just inappropriate relationships that i've had um oh this feels so egg. i don't know. really really do believe in protecting my peace and protecting my happiness like I don't even know if I noticed. I'm pretty sure I was looking. Trisha didn't have any cuts in her last video. You guys have to understand. The one thing Trisha knows how to do is to speak. This woman doesn't stumble. She can do her videos in one take if you let her. Just shoot straight into the camera and just talk to you guys. Um, I've put myself in a lot of situations cut. where I needed to cut. It was a jump cut. Oh, no. Okay. Like, how many times did you do that? It was only like a minute. Like, how do you need to cut after a minute? Like, why can't people just do a whole talk through, like... Well, Trisha, to be fair, I don't know, because you do, like, a 30-minute video that should be cut to 10 minutes. So he, I'm not sure you're an I ambassador. he has 30 minutes worth of apologizing to do to people in his vlogs. I think there was more... She's purposely choosing to show her stopping and starting, stopping and starting, you know, because she's... Listen, the way I'm watching this, it's like this is a performance for Trisha. It's like when you're accepting your Academy Award and you know you deserved it, right? You know you want it. You know you aced that role, but you still have to go up there and accept your award and be humble. This is what Trisha is giving us right now. She's giving her her humble routine. And I'm telling you, I'm not mad at it. Funny how he ignored everyone's call for years, but now he's making himself available. <laughs> I think David is disgusting, and I always will. He's calculated and manipulative, but good job taking my notes from enemies and sitting on the floor for your apology. He didn't do the floor sitting to humble himself. Which helps. The I know, vibe was right. He wasn't like him in his set, like behind his kid's <laughs> choice award, like, hey, look at me. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. 
it is working for Trisha. There are people who are like, Trisha, you've changed and Trisha, you've grown and Trisha, we love to see how you're dealing with the situation. She is soaking all of this up. It's positive reinforcement. So I'm going to allow her to soak it up. All right, Trisha, you don't have to be a troll to get attention. You can actually be a good person and get even more attention. So let that be a lesson to you. You know, when I started on a spiritual journey a couple of years ago, like a really deep one to like find out the meaning of life and like how to deal with my triggers and my mental illness and all stuff like that. Like it really, you know, a large part of that was just like protecting my peace, right? Like I don't have to chime in. I don't constantly have to defend myself because like it's the internet, right? Like I'd be defending myself all over the place. She's still making herself to be the victim in these past situations when she used to terrorize people. But even when she was doing her little spiritual kind of thing, which is interesting because remember they talked about spirituality on the podcast. I just said I didn't break it down, but maybe in the future I will break it down. Since she's been on her spiritual journey all of 2022 and most of 2023, because again, she did do that Reddit breakdown in the beginning of the year, Trisha was able to let things happen on the internet and people talking about her without replying back and being antagonistic and making a big scene out of everything that probably didn't deserve to have a big scene made out of it. So yes, if this is her new way of going about situations and obstacles in her life, then I hope she continues. But this was just such a serious and also very personally disturbed matter for me, like something I went through when I was underage and seeing images underage. Like it's something that like, it repulses me to no end. It repulses me to no end. And I know I was like, I'm done and done with it. And like, again, that's like protecting peace and like just like protecting like my mental stability because it honestly, it was like a lot more triggering than I thought. And this is the thing. Yes, it was her nudes that were being passed around in this group chat, but Trisha had nothing to do with that aspect of it. Yeah, those people were making fun of her. That's something that Trisha shouldn't have even had to have known about, first of all. Okay, now it's out of the open. What do you want from her? As an audience, people watching, what do you want from her? Those guys have to answer to what they were doing in the group chat. And just to be clear, I'm in no way blaming the minors in that group chat. The adults in that chat, you guys have a lot to answer to. Looking for Trisha to make a comment, she only had to because she was working with Colleen at the time. And because of these allegations of Colleen and the group chat, if these allegations are true, it would be criminal. And if so, it's something she has to address in that aspect because she was working with Colleen. But anything further than that, why does she need to really see everything in that aspect and know the details? That's kind of gross. You guys, listen, guess what? There are people right now somewhere talking about you behind your back. Now, do you honestly need to know everything these people are saying about you? What good is that going to do you if you hear people trash talking you? The details. Is that going to make you happy or is that going to make you sad? So that's the thing too with Trisha. You guys are trash talking her in group chats and then you want to show her the screenshots of you trash talking her in group chats. Like, I know it's proof, but I mean, what was supposed to happen? You're going to prove it to her. Okay, now you proved it to her, then what? This is something that either is going to the police or not going to the police. Other than that, it's just gossip and unnecessary. The criminal aspect of it, this should just be dealt with by the police, by Interpol, because I think you guys are breaking international laws. Um, the making fun of me part and stuff like that, that's, you know, that's literally like bottom, the, the last on the list to me. I, I think I'm in shock by it all still, but like, I, like I can't even process it. Like I can't even process it right now. I don't want to process it. It's just more like, okay, let me just move on. And so. Right, Trisha, because it's juvenile. It's one thing to have high schoolers doing it, but now you have grown adults in the mix. And even what Trisha said, it's kind of low rank. You guys passing around her because she doesn't care. That wasn't anything for her to care about. So I brought this up before, but I, I found the clip. Trisha is used to people making fun of her and her body on OnlyFans. You think this is new to her? Oh, what, what was the issue with Trisha? The pork night thing. Oh, the pork boy? Pork boys. Oh, that guy. He's such a douche. <laughs> so they pull up her OnlyFans, and he films everyone laughing and being disgusted and gagging and stuff. <laughs> Let's see what Trish had to say, because she'll probably... Oh, thank you, Ian. Um, Barstool pirating my you. nudes. I don't think... I love that that's her takeaway. Like, that wasn't what I thought. Like, her... She originally responded, and she, and she was like, Excuse me, you owe me money for everybody who watched it. That's funny. She's just funny. And, of course, she's wearing all decked out in Adam Sandler gear. Daddy. <laughs>
So, I just got a tweet. But how is it, how did you make it about pirating my news? Like, that's the least troubling thing about this video. <laughs> is that they pirated it. How did you even know they pirated it? Well, because one person is showing it to the office. Oh, she's, she's person individual. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's <laughs> exactly. They all. She wouldn't have a problem. With that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she just wants licenses from everyone involved. Okay. Please believe that Trisha is not new to this. She's true to this. Trisha knows there's a group of people out there that's going to subscribe to her OF just to goof on her, and all she's making sure is that your credit card doesn't decline. She knows there are people out there doing that, going to her content just to make fun of her. You're not telling her anything new. What you are doing is giving her the details, which is unnecessary. Watch, I, I'm going to have to tell you all what's really going on. Um, yeah, we have this, this set and we did like a pride thing for in the blue. There was a um, mermaid Ursula episode that never aired. Oh yes, Trisha, I was listening. Just because I didn't clip this part of your podcast doesn't mean I didn't hear you say it. Watch this. You should do a priority. You should give me your real priority because I feel like I kind of took over the costume. I did, but Myra Kane Ashley is like a real priority. Okay, but like, so we should do that next. Are... Well, no, because there's other things we have to do first. The only thing I was thinking, okay, <laughs> the whole other thing, not that anyone cares about what we're doing next, but um, yeah, okay, so we'll do the priority because I definitely think Ariel and Little Mermaid, or Ursula because it's like relevant. I have a question. We already clocked over here that Trisha had all her shows planned weeks in advance. And it's interesting too, because remember on Frenemies when she dressed up as Ursula? Let's say mom brain. We're all busy. I mean, come on. I'm mom brain too. <laughs> Ursula brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never say anything about my cost voice on air. <laughs> like, he just acts well, like everything. I mean, look, normal. every day you show up as in, in a new thing. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're bon I, It's Ursula, bro. It's awesome. Thanks. And the new Little Mermaid movie was coming out, and Trisha was already set up to do her podcast episodes promoting The Little Mermaid. You see how the last episode, they were dressed up as Barbie, and we know that new Barbie movie is coming up. And we did the, the rainbow for Pride. And you guys, it just hit me. Frenemies got canceled during Pride Month too. Just like the oversharing podcast, the same rainbow decorations and everything. The ghost of Frenemies past is still continuing to haunt you. The same hole that she left Ethan in is the same hole she's now being left in by Colleen. Hopefully, if anything, Trisha can reflect and realize how even her nitpicking Ethan about money and 5% and wanting memberships and all this money, if she felt she was entitled to, fine. But you see how much responsibility you have when you run a podcast versus just paying somebody out who doesn't have to invest in the podcast. When things like this happen that you didn't foresee, Colleen is left, well, she has her own worries and her own troubles. But as far as in the whole, as far as this podcast is concerned, none of that Colleen has to deal with. She made a bag and she left. It's Trisha who didn't make anything. And now when you hear Ethan say this. You know, the merch issue is another way that just... Is super, super sad for me. And the release of this is July 8th. We were going to do a, we were planning to do a photo shoot this Thursday. Something she insisted on doing. And we put it together with our resources. We were paying a photographer, a uh, product, someone to produce it. This is all money that we were paying up front out of our pockets and never even thought to ask her for money because I don't give a shit, right? In one month's time. And she drops the I'm quitting frenemies video after me doing everything possible to resolve this with her privately. So, like, I, the nerve of her to complain about 5% when I'm literally not making a penny at this point is, is just, it's, it's just, it's just so disrespectful. Now it all makes sense because she was going around just talking about how much money Ethan was making and she never once would tell you how much Ethan was spending because he had 99% of the expenses. Only expenses I would say maybe she had was her, her costumes. Um, I got these seats for it. Like it's, this is all very embarrassing. It's very embarrassing at the end of the day. I don't get embarrassed by many things. Like obviously, um, the podcast ending after three episodes is like embarrassing. Us doing all this is embarrassing. It's just, it's, it, it's, it's all, it's all embarrassing, you know? Um, yeah, but is it embarrassing? 
For Trisha, embarrassment works differently. You know, like most people, when we get embarrassed, we want to crawl in a hole. Not Trisha. It's like she revels in her embarrassment. I'm not downing her, right? People are different. You think people are the same as you and experience things in the same way you do, but you have to know Trisha experiences these emotions differently. So if you're embarrassed, you might want to disappear. When she's embarrassed, she wants a spotlight on her so you can see her being embarrassed. Just how she is. And I, it takes a lot for me to get embarrassed, but also this whole situation, just this whole, well, <sighs> praying it's the end of it. Praying it's like the end of it. It's, you know, it's as far as I, I feel like I said my piece, that's it. But even if it's not the end of it, you don't think Trisha's going to roll with it? Oh, please call in. If you dare to make a response, you don't think Trisha's going to come back at you with the one-two punch? With the TKO? Trisha's not playing with you, Colleen. Now what? I feel like this, there's something came in the mail. Something came in the mail. And I'm just like, I cried. I just like cried and I don't know why. I like, I, I don't know. I feel like this, I can't grasp. I can't grasp what happened. I can't grasp what went down. Like, I just can't grasp it. I can't, you know, usually I'm kind of like on the pulse of things. I can feel when something's, you know, not right or something. It's like, anyways. Compared to your other scandals, this is kind of tame, Trisha, because you're in the right in this scandal. So I don't know why you're trying to hype it up to more than it is. You're cool. You're chill. You cut Colleen. Nobody has any smoke for you. The only smoke people have is, um, I think they were mad at even Colleen at the beginning for working with Trisha. <laughs> And so maybe the only smoke Trisha is getting too is because she was working with Colleen. Can I tell you guys something? Are you guys ready to hear this? All right, let me just wait. Let's hear what she says and then I'll tell you. I got these and I just like cried because I was just like, wow, I'm, I feel, I feel stupid. I feel stupid and I, and I rarely feel stupid. Okay. I Go on, Trisha, play it up. Let everyone think you're not quick on the uptake. When we over here know the truth that you're an undercover genius of manipulation <laughs> really feel like i feel like i'm a pretty good read at people okay at this didn't i say something to that effect in the last video about trisha being good at reading people okay let me go find the clip a month prior i was in her house meeting her child and doing a mukbang meeting her newborn and doing a mukbang with her She invited Trisha to her house and then made fun of her after she left. Was it when Trisha went over to her house to do those mukbang videos that had millions of views? Colleen, Trisha made you a lot of money and in return, you goofed on her? But wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, Trisha. You're good at reading people. I'm kind of surprised you couldn't pick up on the cues that Colleen didn't like you. Yep, we called it over here. Trisha, cut it out. You are good at reading people. Like you didn't know that Colleen had you around her just so that she can laugh at you? That's all you were to Colleen. One of my commenters told me about an instant where Colleen gave Trisha the wrong address to her house and I was able to find that clip. So let me put it here so y'all can watch this, all right? Because this happened in 2016. You guys, I made it to Colleen. Barely, I like, ruined your life. <laughs> yeah. I gave her the wrong address and she thought I was pranking her. Yeah, go watch Colleen's vlog because we talked about it. But oh my gosh, you guys, we've been making cookies. Trisha made it! <laughs> but she almost didn't because I gave her the wrong address. <laughs> and I went to that person's house and I was like, hi! And then it wasn't home. She was like, is Colleen here? And they're like, what are you talking Can about? Can I be 100% honest? I literally thought you were like like pranking me, like making a joke <laughs> of me. I did. I was like, oh my gosh, like mean girls. Like they were like making fun of me. Thank <laughs> you. Like giving yeah. the wrong address. Like this is funny. Now she'll never Give come over. Yeah. Like, I drive all the way out here, and then, like, <laughs> no, for real, because it took me, like, it was a traffic, it was, like, 5 o'clock on a Monday, and I was just, like, oh, my God, they pranked me, they're making fun of me, and I thought that's what it was, oh, my gosh, like, Trisha, opposite now. That's hilarious, that's what my head would have gone to. <laughs> so, Colleen and Trisha each put this clip on their channel, kind of making it seem like it was no big deal, right? You remember how I even said, too, Trisha likes to drop nuggets. Trisha straight up told y'all that Colleen gave her the wrong address on purpose just to prank her. And all her fans are going to still sit here and think, oh yeah, it was just a mistake. How do you give someone the wrong address? Please tell me. You say you live on 54 Acorn Street when it's really 45 Acorn Street? How does that work? 
How do you give the wrong address? Now, if you give someone your address and they wrote it down incorrectly, I understand that. But how do you give somebody the wrong address? Please tell me. Colleen said she gave Trisha the wrong address. <laughs> All right, I have a video I'm making on Colleen. It's just that Trisha's video came out while I was making it. So I'm going to save that for Colleen's video where we're really going to break it down. This video is like all over the place because I'm honestly like just, I'm just going to show you guys because I was like, I got this in the mail and I was just like, I kind of forgot about it and it came in the mail. And I was like, oh my gosh. So we did like invest a lot into this. Like I really was just like so excited to do something produced. She said we, and by we, I'm guessing she means her and Moses. And um, yeah, it kind of all went to, it all went to crap. But you know, again, it's it's for the better. And now I'm just trying to pivot. Like I'm, we have this great space. You guys saw. I mean, it's like not great, but it's it's a nice space. It's a nice space to do stuff. So I'm like trying to pivot on what to do next. Pivot, is that gonna be the new buzzword? Didn't we already tell Colleen that Trisha would continue on without her if need be? I know we told her that. Let me find the clip real quick open up another like already i was thinking well if you don't want to do this podcast i'm like you know what we can switch into another podcast i could do like a wendy williams or i could do this i could i'm trying to like already pivot boom isn't that what i just said colleen i told you trisha is going to ride that podcast until the wheels fall off <laughs> because you were shaky she was already deciding what she was going to do with everything that she already accomplished so far she owns the channel it's nothing to just delete out your name and just be the trisha show or whatever it is she wants to do Colleen, sit there and watch Trisha pivot as if you don't even exist. Like I love doing produced content. You guys don't know what I did. Um, like Trish talks. Like that's so niche, but you guys know I have a separate channel where like, it's kind of like a channel where I like experimented. I had my very first podcast with Trish on there. Um, and then I did like a ASMR podcast that's currently on there. I did I did a series called Trish Talks, which is supposed to be like a Darmine like series, which I love to do. Um, so I kind of produce put like a lot of produced content on there. And I think the channel right now is called Trish Talks. Trish Talks or the podcast. I don't know. I haven't literally updated anything since last year on there. So I'm just trying to figure out like okay, maybe turn that channel into something produced. Like I love, like, I love doing produced content. And I love like I love listening to podcasts. I obviously love podcasts. I love talking. Like it's very um. It's it's really the new uh it's really the new YouTube is podcasting right like podcasts are obviously on YouTube but like you know it used to be like vlogs and sketches and it's really podcasts now which is basically like what I do anyways I kind of just talk. We already talked about running a podcast is lucrative on YouTube. YouTube wants people on the app for a long time and podcasts which are typically over an hour long will get promoted on YouTube if it can capture an audience. And yes, podcasts can be more profitable than vlogs, if done correctly. Can I tell you something? That video that Trisha did the other day titled Colleen, right now it's almost at 3 million, 2.5, it probably can hit 3 million views. At 21 minutes, this one video is more profitable than her three podcast episodes combined. Now, if Trisha can keep more eyes on her channel, and let's say if, I don't know, a pregnancy announcement is coming soon, she's gonna make bank. But with a microphone, and I'm, just, I'm trying to pivot, I'm trying to pivot and figure out because I really love doing this. I feel like I'm relatively good at it. I like to talk, so um, I've done so many. <laughs> I did, I've done so many. I did a Trisha has what they call the gift of gab. She's great at public speaking. She's a natural. Even the way she would read the commercials on Frenemies was engaging. And her enthusiasm rubbed off on Ethan. And I loved watching them do their commercials together. I mean, who really sits through commercials? Now, I have to say, I haven't had that same type of enjoyment on any of her other podcasts. But I'm sure she has people who will eat up whatever she has to offer. Mental health podcast on my ASMR channel. It was called My Chemical Imbalance. I did a Lost podcast. Like, I, I, I try so many different things. Yeah, I saw her dressed up as Locke from the TV show Lost on that podcast she said she did. I just saw her dressed up as it. I didn't watch it. She looked really good. And again, I'm not really, like, embarrassed to fail or embarrassed to, like, have whatever. Like, I'm really not. Like, yeah, Trisha, we know you're not fooling us over here. This is a little, this is a lot different, the situation, but um, I was, I was excited. Anyways, so I'm trying to pivot and obviously all this will be coming down and I'm trying to figure out in the backgrounds or whatever we can use. Doesn't this remind you of the sparklets water? I love that so much. Um, 
So it was one of my lovely commenters that first told me the oversharing backdrop could be found on Amazon. And so in conclusion to our little experiment, you can now find the backdrop as well as every other thing she was wearing on the oversharing podcast in the description box below by using my Amazon affiliate link in which I will earn a small commission for every sale. Stay tuned because there's more I have to add to this. Yeah, and I guess we'll just like sell these chairs on offer. <laughs> I love them, but like honestly, we just honestly don't have the space for it. And like, I don't know, it's um, weird. She's selling the chairs, two for one special. Everything must go. <laughs> okay, anyways, so this came in the, the mail, and I'm, oh God, two, two things, two things that are very embarrassing. Embarrassing the mail. Embarrassing the mail. How long has she been prepping us? Please, Trisha, get to the point. You guys should know something about me when I have a friendship or like I, I get really excited about it. Like I get really excited about friendships. Um, I I do hold them near and dear to my heart. <laughs> um, but I, I've just never been good at keeping friends. And I, I don't I'm not victimizing myself in this situation. Like it could very well be me. Like I, I may not be a great friend either. You know, like, I don't know. Trisha, you're good. The one time you are actually in the right of a friend breakup and you're going to play it off as if you could be the problem in this situation. Good play. Good play. It's my belief that you knew that Colleen never liked you. Remember how she was so scared that Colleen was going to back out of the podcast last minute? Like with us, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's just make it happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. and we just, we we're like, let's do it. And then yeah. once it started happening, I was like, well, it'll probably never happen. It'll probably, it's not going to happen. And we'll never do any episodes. Yes. And we'll never do it again. Uh, yeah. It took me a minute to get going on this because I didn't know either. I was like, okay, is this like, am I going to like get excited and then it's not going to happen or that like, you're not serious about it? And then I'm like, in, like a stupid person. And I'm just like, oh my God, we started this. And you're like, no, I was just kidding, Trish. I wasn't being serious. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm so stupid. No, yeah. So they had a weird energy for supposed friends, didn't they? Yeah, that's because they weren't friends. Can't you like look back and see now that their demeanor was just them being suspicious of each other? Now, I'm not saying that Trisha knew the specifics of what was being said about her in the group chat. No way she knew the specifics. But she didn't need to know the details because she already knew that Colleen never liked her. So let's say if Colleen was able to weather this storm, Trisha wouldn't have dropped her on the podcast. It's only because Colleen canceled herself. There was nothing left for Trisha to do but cancel her too. And I maintain, even though it does take a while to even decide what you're going to do with a business that's facing controversy, yes, this is true. But I'm telling y'all, in my opinion, that Trisha, who put all this money into the podcast and was ready to do it with Colleen, someone she knew purposely gave it a wrong dress to her house. She knows that Colleen doesn't like her. I'll get into it in my Colleen video because they're all friends with Shane Dawson. So you already know how that goes. Trisha would have forgiven Colleen if it was just about her and Colleen insulting her behind her back. Trisha would have forgiven her. How do I know? Well, for two reasons. One reason is because of past behavior. Trisha and Ethan had an explosive past with words being thrown back and forth and Trisha was able to forgive Ethan, he, her, and they joined together to do a very successful podcast, which goes to show you can dislike somebody at first, but still find common ground to do a show together. And the number two reason is because Trisha already told us. But I kind of gave her outs because I was like, hey, like, you know, we've talked crap about Molly, that's fine. We, were, we weren't that close back then, I guess, like, you know, whatever. And she vehemently denied, no, I, I never sent pictures of you. Like they would, he, the underage fan would send me pictures of you. So when I do make a friend, I get excited. Anyways, I got really excited. <laughs> I get really excited. And I guess I'll show what we talked about first. If anyone wants these chairs and you're in Southern California, let me know. Um, literally just whatever we paid for them. I paid like maybe 3000 for both of them. I don't know. <laughs> now she's giving us the price of the chairs. Trisha's really mad that I lowballed the cost of her set in my other video. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do with them. I don't know what to do with them, but I also have this size small Glenda dress. I know this seems like weird to me. This seems like, oh, uh, like, it just is weird. It's just weird, but like, I don't know what else to do because I have all this stuff. Uh, this one dress is a size small. Okay, that's not even like, okay. She's selling Colleen's cosplay dress, y'all. On the show, I was saying like, I need this to last. <laughs> I need this to last because I got bling cups and the bling cups have arrived and there's two of them. 
Yes, Trisha, I heard you when you mentioned the bling cups you had coming in the mail, but I cut it out of the last video, so let me put it here right now. Gosh, sparkles is like, when we first started talking about doing this, it was like all we talked about was like sparkles, rhinestone everything. So yes. if this ever did become like a bigger thing, like if any... If I already got started, rhinestone cups being made, so we had to last a few more weeks to get the cups in here. I'm going to gag. <laughs> it is not. And literally, it's I'm... <laughs> At least she only had two made, and she didn't order any more to sell. Okay, I'm going to need everyone to help me out. I knew Trisha had a posh account where she sold her used items. She's had it for a while. I already know all about that. But did she always have an Amazon affiliate link? Because right now I noticed there is an Amazon link in her description. And I went back her other videos. She has it there. But was that link always there? Because I know for sure she did not have an Amazon link on her oversharing podcast, which doesn't make any sense because she was buying all her stuff for the show on Amazon. But let me know if you know in the comments. Because Trisha, you just left so much money on the table by not having those Amazon links in the description box in your oversharing podcast. That's where it would have counted the most. And because her podcast is ending, I'm going to be wrapping up my little Amazon link experiment within the next couple of days. If I don't make it in a video, I'll make it an updated post on the community wall where you guys can see how affiliate marketing works in more detail. And um, I, oh no, okay, what's happening over here? Um, yeah, so I might put these on my Poshmark. <laughs> I don't know if anybody wants these, but there it is oversharing mugs so uh i was super excited this actually looks really pretty in the light to sit right here that would have been super cute obviously uh i i, I don't know i'm not going to do anything with these so i might put these on poshmark i probably will put them on my poshmark if you guys want to follow me poshmark 88 it's a liquid sale everything must go um because i'm trying to pivot like i said i want to build like a new set and stuff so there's all that <clears throat> now the worst or the cutest and I'm so sad I'm so I'm so sad and I'm also so embarrassed by this like, I'm so embarrassed by this like I'm she's not I mean not really I'm really someone who might be like a little too much like I think I am too much when it comes to like being friendships I like I kind of do a lot I do a lot and I do it in my relationships too but luckily I have a husband that like likes a lot but I think I do a lot sometimes I think I do the most and um I put way too much into them it's not wrong to put your all into a friendship. It only becomes wrong when you're the only one putting your all into the friendship. Look at everything Trisha did for Ethan when they were still friends. Oh, and by the way, Trisha got me the best present ever. She got me a PlayStation 5, which... <laughs> one. one. Okay, now I gotta unbox it. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, dude. And wait, look at the back. Hold on, you gotta look at the back. Yo, these are hype as fuck. We're twins. Oh, shit, bro. And look at the, no, put them together. Okay. You got to put the, the left and the right together. Oh, shit. Friend, friend me. Friend yeah. mes. It's friend all like <laughs> It says Yo! friend mes. Yeah. <laughs> These are super nice shoes. All those things she did for Ethan was really nice of her to do. And I'm sure giving gifts to Ethan are things even now she doesn't regret. So these came in the mail, okay? Because <laughs> if you couldn't tell by the Galinda dress, um, our next cosplay was going to be Wicked. Wicked. <laughs> With the latest calling controversy about Wicked, this mail opening is rather shady. Trisha, I only have one question. Is the doll's face painted green or black? All right, because we're going to need you to settle the debate. <laughs> and I love Wicked, and I'm so sad about it. So this says one of kind on there. So it's just like fresh. Never, ever have ordered a custom American doll. And I was like super excited about these. So, okay, you're going to see this, and you're going to be like, this looks like you, Trisha. Let me show you. Because it has a costume that goes with it. So this is what the Trisha doll looks like. And I know you're like, okay, um, that looks like me. Dark hair. Okay, cute. Okay. And then I had gotten a matching one. So it's like... This might be, this might be embarrassing. Like, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so weird. I literally, I think it's more embarrassing, like a hindsight, how much I put into this, like, uh, knowing this person is disgusted by me, but anyways. But you always knew that, Trisha. Shane told you. He did.
You guys saw on Frenemies how mad Trisha was at Shane when they got into their disagreement. And what happened a couple of months later? She forgave him. Remember, she did a live where she said that people like Shane deserve to have second and third chances. Remember, she was the one that buried him alive on Frenemies. Remember, she was super mad at David Dobrik and a couple of weeks after Frenemies ended, she was saying she didn't think David should be cancelled. Meanwhile, she's the one that started the train to get him cancelled. And remember how mad she was at Ethan the first two times she stormed off of Frenemies? And look, she was right back in her seat the very next week. And remember the last time she stormed off of Frenemies? And after she released videos saying she quit and everything else. A month later, she was back in Ethan's basement recording the last unaired episode of Frenemies. You all don't think, yeah, 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 she's mad at Colleen. But also, yeah, she's forgiven Colleen. But don't get me wrong, like right now, Trisha knows she has to stay away from Colleen. Because when it's alleged you're doing criminal things, especially what Colleen's accused of, you don't want to have anything to do with it. However, when the climate eases up, Trisha will be on the forgiveness bandwagon for Colleen. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You guys remember? She forgave Jeffree Star too, even after she was going on and on and on about him telling her to jump in Vegas. So even when you guys are like angry, you can be angry and mad or whatever, but don't be angry and mad on behalf of Trisha. Remember she did the same thing with, what's the other guy? Keemstar. She was mad at Keemstar talking up with Ethan about how she didn't like Keemstar. Boom. Where was she after Frenemies ended? Right next to Keemstar. All I'm saying is do not raise your blood pressure on Trisha Paytas behalf. Trisha is going to God willing live until she's a hundred years old while you guys are going to be stressed out taking all of her battles to heart. She's just one of these people that can experience something, have an emotional outburst and then she's a-okay after while you guys are still marching with your pitchforks. I'm saying don't do it because she even made Ethan look kind of funny going after her battles. Remember all of 2022 or half of 2022, Ethan had to go on an apology tour and making amends with people that he only battled on behalf of Trisha? Couldn't be me. Uh, so, 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 so,
it's, and it wasn't even like meant to be me. But I, 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 I more just meant like, hey, if you ever don't want to do this, or if you ever upset with me, just talk to me. Like we can yeah. work it out. Like I, I would never want to like trigger you for anything. Like I don't keep, I don't not even realizing or recognizing that we're even filming right now. It's like yeah. I. You know, I always want you to just like talk to me if you ever had an issue with me, if I ever had an issue with you. Like, yeah. But I don't think we ever would. <laughs> no, I'm, no. And I yeah. feel. So because Shisha didn't do that, I feel that Colleen told her to take down all their collaborative videos. That's what I think happened. And that's why you see Trisha here selling everything. <laughs> um, and yeah, so if anybody is interested in anything, if you want the whole set <laughs> and you're in Southern California, let us know. Um, the American Girl dolls, I can't return. They were customized. So if anyone has an interest in that, um, I'm going to sell them because I'm going to try and pivot, um, which is what I do. And um, we know it. Oh, let me add on to the point because I don't think I finished my point before. I think that Trisha, when she found out what Colleen was saying about her in a group chat, I think she didn't care and she would have forgiven Colleen, be the bigger person, so to speak, and be delicate with Colleen because she needed Colleen to bring in the ad dollars and she would have continued with the podcast. So you guys contacting Trisha, thinking you were doing something, telling her that Colleen was talking behind her back, Trisha did not care. You guys have to understand, Trisha was trying to make money for Colleen and you guys trying to get her attention with that was aggravating her. It was small potatoes compared to her making big money with Colleen. But once the, the criminal allegations came into it and became a sticking point, at that instant, there is no more business dealing because you don't want to stigmatize yourself being attached to someone that's accused of doing, at the very least, um, what's that word that they say? Like a delinquent. You're contributing to the delinquency of a minor right Trisha didn't want any part of that so then it's like you guys kind of had to force her to stop oversharing podcasts she wouldn't have stopped it you know figure out something else some other form of produced content <laughs> and uh sorry I'm, I'm like laughing because I'm like nervous I'm like getting hot but um yeah so anyways say goodbye to this set bye set this is it this is the last I was so sad no one got to see this blue and the rainbow my amazing husband um put this all together for me and it was like wow like ah oh, and he's so good and he did the audio and the filming and trisha's letting us know that not only did moses do video he also did audio because see i had him jotted down as just doing video so she's trying to correct me okay trisha i get it he did audio did he also do the latest thumbnail too that looks like his work we're proud of you moses like, but you know what? It showed us, like, honestly, that we can, like, produce something that looks cool. And, like, we're hoping to, like, make something else. So I'm kind of figuring it out. And there's some few options out there. And um, it's just pretty cool that we can, like, do this kind of stuff. Trisha, you are amazing with the visuals. I'll give you credit where credit is due. But you have got to get your budget under control. Do y'all remember after Frenemies ended, Trisha was making a stink saying that she could have produced Frenemies on her channel with Ethan? Ethan, the guy that's been doing podcasts since before the current wave of all these YouTubers jumping on the bandwagon, Trisha thought she could run a better podcast than him. The guy who's now doing daily shows and was able to hire another person, Hassan, after Trisha quit to do another podcast with him. And a year later, things are still running smoothly with no drama between them two. And um, my husband is like just the most amazing person in the whole world, like honestly, um, doing all this and setting this up. And I think that's what's kind of embarrassing. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. You should. I put her on blast on one of these episodes with how she used to treat Moses and now she's crying. He should be crying. <laughs> Everyone, I can't stand people who treat their spouses like the dirt on the bottom of their shoe. That's the person you love and that's how you treat them. I, I don't like that. So right now, Trisha, if you have all that talk about how much you love Moses, then okay, please do that. But as they say, actions speak louder than words. If you are indeed improving on that aspect, then good for you. Keep it up. I feel like that's kind of embarrassing because it's like he put, had so much faith in this and like did this for me because I was so excited about it. And I was like, for the first time in like a really long time, I was excited about something, you know? And he did all this and built all this. And then I'm like, oh man, now it's like this. And I just, I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like a failure. <sighs> me too, Ethan. Me too.
Did Trisha care when your wife, Ethan, put all her hard work into Frenemies? It's super, super sad for me in the same way of how she just, like, wants to cut the whole crew loose. Because, first of all, we fronted the money, we produced, designed, and made in its totality. Ela did. Ela, despite Trisha saying the meanest and rudest things about her, knowing that there was a chance that this show might not work out, you know, made the risk, used her company's resources, and, you know, for Trisha to just, like, walk out. I mean, we have this merch release. Every penny I've made from Frenemies, by the way, if she wants to talk about money, is tied up in this merch that doesn't come out for another month. And I don't even know if we're going to sell. So it's like for all the complaining she does for money, she's the only one, as far as I'm concerned, that's actually making money from this thing. Because I've spent pretty much every fucking penny I've made from Frenemies into the show on merch, into the own resources, buying more equipment for the fucking studio, paint, building the set. It's like it's so easy for her to complain. She shows up. She gets a guaranteed check every fucking month. And, and I'm spent, and I'm putting all the, my money on the line. And now I have hundreds of thousands of dollars tied up in merch that I'm probably not going to be able to fucking sell that my wife works super hard on, her staff works super hard on. And now it's like, tough luck, dude. Trisha got paid. And she's complaining about 5%. It blows my mind. Um, Ethan, Moses hung up drapes. You're not the only one that has it hard. And I am not a failure. I have lots of failures, but I'm not a failure. I know that. And so I just keep going. That's all I can do, right? And like, um, I am so thankful for like my family at this time. Like, you know, a large part of my healing, a large part of my treatment is um, is not not to isolate, right? Like to be around people. And I feel like whenever I had episodes or issues or my emotions were getting triggered, like I didn't have people to be around to comfort me to like, you know, bring me into reality. Like everything's okay. I still have my family. And I think that's what really matters, right? Like that's all that matters. For years and years ago, like, you know, when I was by myself, you know, I just, I felt like I really didn't have anything like substantial so i'm I, i'm super thankful for that and um yeah i just i just want to pivot because you know we are trying to start you know to have a second baby and we've been trying wait for it an announcement is coming soon trisha is as fertile as a rabbit and so i just want to figure out something again that was kind of nice like this where it was like in in the home and like once a week and it was something that like I you know could get glam for and stuff so I'm just like trying to figure it all out and if everyone's still here like thank you I oh look everyone she's thanking us oh you're welcome Trish appreciate it like you know making content so fun but it's even more fun when people watch it so um I'm thankful for you know anyone watching this now and um yeah, just trying to figure it all out. But uh, yeah, there's that. Okay, Trisha, we know all about you. Now let's try to figure out this one right here. 